In this quick lesson, I'm going to show you how to use this lighting tab in the shading and 3D effects of the Design Center. So here we have some uh, text that we've applied a prismatic effect to. I'll show you where that is here. So you just come in here and click on prismatic and apply one of these effects. Now you can see the sphere here with these light sources over it. And we've also got our surface material settings here. Now these all work together and um, I'll explain these one by one. So the first thing is, is we've got this light source and I can actually change its position on the sphere by using this X and Y coordinate system here which as you can see as I do this it affects the position of the light source and changes the look of uh, the, the effect on this text here. So I can spin this around around the 360 degrees of the sphere and you can see all these different ways the light actually shines upon this, uh, this effect here. I can move it manually or physically on the sphere itself using the mouse here and uh, finally adjust it to the exact position I'm looking for. And depending on where I put it, I get a completely different look. So that's the way that works. Now this one here is set to zero, so if I increase this, you'll see it has a profound effect on the effect itself. It's now uh, much more uh, uh, light, there's a lot more light on it. And as you can see here, by adjusting these in certain positions, I can get all sorts of different looks uh, on this particular effect. And I can fiddle around with this uh, almost indefinitely uh, and sort of achieve the look I'm looking for, as you can see here. Position these nodes and I get any manner of different uh, different looks. So that's the way the light sources work. I could go on forever with that, <laughs> I won't. Uh, now we'll talk about the surface material. So I've got gloss value and highlight strength. Uh, these are fairly self-explanatory. I'll just change this to uh, gloss plastic, I think. Um, or what? No, no, gloss plastic is probably the best one. Okay, we'll just select uh, this blue one here like so. And this is going to highlight what I'm talking about. So you can see these highlight effects around this, uh, around this text here. And it's set to 100% 90% at the moment. Now, if I back this off, you can see that it becomes less glossy. It's starting, it's starting to look like a satin sort of effect. And as I go further down, it's sort of starting to look like a matte plastic type look. And I mean, I could take it down to it was almost flat. But I can adjust this up and down, and I can type in a particular value to get the sort of gloss uh, factor that I'm looking for. So that, that creates the glossiness of the, uh, of the effect. The highlight strength also affects the glossiness because uh, the less of the highlight strength, the, the, the more matte it looks or more of a, a dull type material. So by adjusting the highlight strength up and down and uh, adjusting the gloss value, I can go from anything from a, a very matte type looking like almost like a rock or a matte plastic all the way up to a, a very glossy, very shiny type, highly polished plastic or metal look. So by combining all these together uh, and things like the profile here, um, I can change the the perception of the effect quite dramatically and these tools and features all work together um, as I said before they're a symbiotic type relationship and by affecting one or changing one you can uh, you can really change the overall appearance of the effect and essentially just go on forever and I'll, I'll just uh, fiddle with this here just to show you some of the different things you can do I strongly recommend that you come in, uh, select um, some text, uh, go to the preset, bring up some presets and then come in here into the design center here and fiddle around with these effects. I mean you can undo them and it doesn't really matter, you can save off test jobs if you like. Now I'll reset this back to a standard type uh, thing here and I'll talk to you about diffuse shading. What that is, is is how much shading is actually applied. So as you can see, as I back that off, there is far less shading applied to the effect itself. And as I bring that up, I get more of this shading effect, like so. So that's what diffuse shading does. It's, it's the amount of shading. The surface brightness, that also uh, dramatically affects the effect. Uh, if I bring that right down, you can see that it darkens up the entire effect uh, because there's less light overall over the surface of the object. Um, which is apart from the light surface, they're, they're actually not related to each other from that point of view. It's not the intensity of the light, it's the surface brightness, it's the, it's the material itself and how much it reflects, as you can see there. 
So that's how those tools particularly work. Um, and by fiddling around with them and changing all these settings, you can make some very different effects. So you've got those extras there that I was talking about before in these profiles. You've got to remember they all work together. So when you're doing effects, be sure to be aware that you can come in and change things. Like for example, I can apply a texture to this effect, like so. And you can see by applying a texture, it just completely changes the look. And I can fiddle around with things like the surface brightness and the highlight strength to create a, uh, a very unique and quite effective effect. So that's how those tools work. Um, and oh, of course, as I said, just remember you've got all these presets here. Uh, and actually, I'll show you the iron preset just very quickly. So this is combining uh, surface brightness with uh, a gloss and a bump map. And you can see that applying a bump map gives another dimension and another depth to the effects you can create. You know, I've gone on enough, though, I think I've explained those. Uh, go and have a look at them. Thank you. That's the end of this lesson.